Hello YouTube, and welcome to a quick tutorial for Veracrypt. If you're already familiar with the benefits of Veracrypt and want to go straight into the setup, I'll leave a timestamp here on the screen for you to skip ahead to. If you want to learn more about Veracrypt, how it works, why you should use it, and some more details, just follow along. The very first thing you need to understand is that a login password to your computer does not protect your files and data. You need to encrypt your data, Go ahead and watch my video where I show you how to access your files on a password protected computer with extreme ease. Hopefully this scares you into encrypting your data. To encrypt your files, the two major operating systems, macOS and Windows, offer encryption methods, BitLocker and FileVault. They both use closed source encryption from Apple and Microsoft, both of whom have the ability to access your data or hand over your data to government agencies or companies. They only allow full disk encryption, on top of that, BitLocker requires Windows Pro, and these encryption methods only work with that given operating system. It's not cross-platform. So if you couldn't tell from this comparison, there are problems with these services, although they're still better than nothing. Luckily, Veracrypt exists. Veracrypt is a FOSS encryption software, free and open source, so the code is publicly available to ensure the utmost security and privacy. This allows people to check the program and the encryption. It's versatile and not limited to only full disk encryption, it's free, and it works with every major desktop operating system, including Linux. It is king. I mentioned the versatility of Veracrypt, and that's because it's not only used for full disk encryption. You can create hidden volumes so a partition or drive is fully hidden, and you can encrypt individual files on your system. It doesn't need to be the whole thing. For this guide, the first thing I'm going to cover is encrypting individual files and folders, and the second is full disk encryption. Let's dive into the program. When you first open Veracrypt, you may be a bit lost, it's messy and complex, but let's break it down. I'm demonstrating on Windows, but the UI is the same on every operating system, so the process is more or less identical. Here on my desktop, I have a folder I want to encrypt. It can be a file or a folder, but I'll refer to it as a folder for the demo. What Veracrypt is going to do is it's going to create an encrypted volume where I can transfer the folder and store it inside the encrypted volume. To help you understand how this works, I like to picture a volume as a virtual encrypted flash drive. So imagine you plugged a flash drive into your computer that implemented proper encryption. If you transferred this folder to that flash drive, it would be encrypted. Let's see how this works. Click Create Volume. Then select an encrypted file container. For most of you, a standard volume is what you're looking for, but do be aware that you can create hidden volumes as well. Veracrypt will now ask for a volume location. I'm going to use my desktop as a demo, but you can choose wherever you want. Up next is encryption. For most of you watching, AES set to SHA-512 will be more than enough encryption. For more advanced users, you can customize this a bit more. The next step is to create a size for your volume. Remember how I said a volume is like an encrypted flash drive? Well, how large do you want your flash drive to be? This will take up system storage, so pick a reasonable size. The folder I'm encrypting is a little bit over 1 megabyte. I'm going to add some leeway, so let's do 10 megabytes. Keep in mind you will all have different space requirements. Now it's password time! Type in your password preferably generated by a password manager. If you use a password manager, make sure that you save your password on another device before you encrypt this device, or else you're not going to be able to get in. If not, pick something that's long, with lots of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, symbols, and no dictionary terms. So use a password manager. You can set up a key file and a PIM as well to add additional authentication. I'm not using one, but you can create one right here. Here's the fun part! Veracrypt uses randomness picked up by mouse movements to increase the strength of the encryption keys. So have at it until you see that bar fill up. I wouldn't recommend changing this unless you have a good reason to mess with it. Click format to delete your little virtual friend. He's ready! Shaboodles! Alright, well, now what? You'll see this odd file wherever you decided to save your volume, so what do we do with it? Well, we have to mount it, similar to how you plug in a flash drive. First, select a letter that you want to represent the mounted volume. I will do N for Nutella. Then, here to the right you need to select a volume you just created. Once those two things are done, click Mount on the bottom left. It'll ask you for your credentials, give it a second, and there you go. You can double click it to open your volume, which shows up on your system like a flash drive would. 
Now, all you need to do is move your encrypted folder to the encrypted volume. And that's that. Go back to Veracrypt, dismount, and you're done. Your data is inside the encrypted volume, which you can transfer to any computer running Veracrypt to unlock it. This is how you encrypt files and folders using Veracrypt. Now, let's cover full disk encryption. The process is very similar, so there shouldn't be any major surprises. Click Create Volume, now select Encrypt the System Partition. Select Normal, Encrypt the Windows Partition, unless you want to do the entire drive. Select Single Boot, unless you're dual booting with another operating system. We've already covered encryption before, password and key files, the random mouse bar, and now you need to create a rescue disk. I would highly recommend everybody does this and make sure you store it somewhere that isn't on your operating system because you won't have access to your operating system in the event that you need to use the rescue disk. I won't make one for demo purposes, but you should 100% make one. Now you have the option to wipe your data that isn't currently encrypted. This won't remove your data, it'll only make sure that it is properly disposed during the encryption process. Keep in mind that if you're using an SSD, don't do more than one wipe, and also remember that this will add time to the encryption process. At this point, you can click test to make sure Veracrypt works on a reboot. When you reboot, you should get a screen like this asking for your credentials. Once your computer boots up again, click encrypt and wait for Veracrypt to encrypt all of your data. If you ever wanted to unencrypt your drive, go to system and permanently decrypt it right there. I hope this clear up Veracrypt, the use case for it and why it is absolutely awesome. If you enjoyed this type of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more of it, and don't forget to leave a like below if it helped you out. To be a part of the community, make sure to follow our Instagram, Minds, and don't forget about the Discord server. Thank you for watching, and have a Lemurious day.